Hey, welcome to day three of my persona style self portrait. Today I'll put the finishing touches on the portrait. I'll see if I can punch up the contrast by pushing my lights lighter and my darks darker. I'll double check that my edges have a variety of hard and soft and that my transitions are working to create volume. Then I get to go crazy and add the finishing elements that will solidify my personality. Tell my story. So every portrait tells a story, but a self-portrait, well, that's a deep dive, isn't it? So I'm gonna start today by putting the final uh, touches to the hair. I don't wanna cover up all of the translucent hair underpainting. I just want to get the actual color, the darks in there, and in some areas I'll leave the underpainting to show through. With the persona portrait style, I like the face to have crisp detail, and then as you move out away from the face, the brush strokes become more painterly and it's a, li a little bit looser in style. So with the hair, I'm trying to group my brush strokes. I don't wanna have long ribbon-like strokes for the hair. I'm trying to break that up. I have a tendency to do that, especially with longer, straighter hair but I do not want to do that. I want to group the values and then just pull out a few strands here and there. So I'll put a list of the oil paints and mediums that I'm using in the description. So if you're interested, check there. So the light source is at the top and the way that it catches the light through the hair is gonna help tell that story. It's gonna show the viewer that the light's coming from above and then it falls off to the right side of the face, moves down into the shadows. Stick around to the end and I will tell you a really funny story about why I'm having the element added in to the portrait that you see me painting at that time. I think you'll get a kick out of it. Welcome to my channel, Shelly J. Cox and SJC Sport Couture. So I'm going to be finishing up the hair here. If you have any questions on the painting process, just let me know and I'll answer those in the comments. So if you or someone you know would like to have a persona portrait painted, just let me know in an email. You can also find more details and pricing on my website at ShellyJCox.com. So here you see me checking the edges where my face moves into the shadow of the hair and also on the right side where the shadow hair meets the face. You just really don't want those edges to be straight, hard lines. They need to blend together softly. I'm using my comber brushes here to get this effect. The comber brushes work really well. They're sort of serrated or kind of shaped like a comb actually. The brush uh, bristles have little gaps and irregularities and it's not a full straight brush. So here in the chest and shoulder area, I'm just going over some of these transitions. I wanna make sure that they show the volume and move from each form to the next softly. This look like a good area to punch up some of my lights. Uh, it's uh, a sh my shoulder I'm leaning on, it's moving a little bit forward into the light, so here I'm gonna punch up the lights. I 
And since I punched up the lights, I'm gonna just rework those transitions a little bit. All right, so I'm going to do a little underpainting here with acrylic paint so it dries quickly and I can continue to work on top of it in day three. I don't wanna to have to wait for oils to dry a couple days and then come back for this part. I like using the gray underneath, so whatever color you go on top of it with, you've got a nice base and you've worked out your values. Uh, this is going to get a red uh, cover on top red and white striped ball, so the gray is going to work perfect. Once I have the underpainting laid in, I'll go and work on the hand while it dries and then it'll be dry to the touch and I can come back over it with the red right after I finish the hand. moving on into the hand now so with the hand as the fingers are closer to the viewer like the pinky and the ring finger those two fingers may have a bit more detail and be in more of a focus to the viewer and the other two fingers further away from the viewer can just fade away a little bit more also you want to make sure you're paying attention to the light source and you're creating transitions and volume with each finger And I was trying to think about painting the hands with just a few brush strokes, as few brush strokes as possible in a more um, Sargent-esque manner. So I know that my ball is going to be red, so I'm putting in some red reflections into those fingers that are closest to the viewer and closest to the ball where you can see them spreading open. When I come back in with the red on the ball, I can heighten that and pull some of that red into the fingers there as well. All right, here we go with the red. Hey, if you're liking these videos and you wanna see more, hit that thumbs up button. I'd really appreciate it. And go ahead and subscribe to the channel and ring the bell, and that way you'll be notified when I upload new videos. Thanks, I appreciate you guys subscribing and commenting.
this is my little kid's easel because when I was, I don't know, three, four, I just loved finger painting. I was painting and drawing all the time. I even have a finger painting that I did, I believe, in kindergarten. It was those fun kind where you squirt all the paint on the paper, fold it in half, smush it around, then open it up and see what you have. Okay, story time. So, when I was in fifth grade, I think it was during English class, I was sitting next to this boy and I was doodling really sexy women in short skirts, big boobs, high heels, sort of uh, little Abner style, if you know that comic. And I was constantly doodling like this in the margins of my paper and I don't know, I was probably bored with the lesson and found doodling to be more interesting. Well, one of the times my teacher um, noticed that I was showing my friend who was sitting next to me what I had drawn and so she grabbed the paper and marched me in my drawing down to the principal's office where they proceeded to call my mother. So my mom, she has always been a big fan of my artwork, but she came down anyway and they were <laughs> explaining to her that the drawing was inappropriate for some reason. Though, mind you, it's, I'm in fifth grade, this is in Kentucky of all places where I grew up, so there's that. But my mom, she was like, well, I think the drawing's really good and I don't see the problem here. So the sales were kind of let out, the windows let out of the sales of the principal and my teacher. However, I did promise to keep my drawing to art class and when lessons weren't being given so that I could pay more attention. But I thought that was fun. So here in my portrait is one of the women <laughs> I used to draw in the margins of my paper. So a big part of my art journey has been with studying fashion illustrations. I used to grab the Sunday morning paper and go directly to the style section, find those illustrations, and I would sit and copy them. So I was doing master copies way before I knew that was a thing. And so fashion illustration is in the background here. A lot of the black scribbles are fashion illustrative type quick sketch drawings. So here I'm putting in one a more finished fashion illustration, a little bit of a haute couture style, if you will. I really appreciate you guys watching. A big thanks to all that have subscribed, I really appreciate it. And stay tuned for my next Persona portrait where I'm painting um, first responder, firefighter, Jack Vandermeulen, who just happens to be my son.
finished portrait. Persona portrait style. So, until I see you again, have a good one.